Spotting the signs of cancer in dogs really depends on the cancer. And unfortunately, some of them are really hard to detect until it's really advanced in the pet and you don't have a lot of treatment options. Nearly one third of dogs will get cancer in their lifetime. What we're doing with our treatment is we're trying to wake up the dog's immune system so that it recognises there's like a bad foreign invader there. Cancers are really sneaky. They come from our normal tissue, so they kind of look like normal tissue to our immune system. So our initial theory when we started working was to put like a danger signal into the cancer. And that kind of is like, woo woo, I'm here. Um, the body's immune system will wake up and start to recognise the cancer and fight it. And the easiest ones for us to work with initially were ones on the outside of the dog. And it was just really easy for us to see the cancers on the outside and measure them. If they got bigger, we weren't having an effect. If they stayed the same, maybe that was good. If they shrunk and they disappeared, woohoo, we won, right? The very first patient we tried, we cured. And that was just amazing. <laughs> like, yeah, just what are the odds? So we, we found that a third of dogs will get a really good response. And so we started to really feel confident that this had a lot of promise. At this stage, we're not sure if the vaccine will work in all types of cancer. There are some types of cancer where we know it's, it's really got a very good response rate. So we have to set up more trials and investigate in more cancers before we know if it's going to help more dogs. We anticipate the trial will take about two years. I have a PhD student and that's going to be her project. And we're hoping, if we're really lucky, we would get um, samples and be able to give out vaccines for about 20 to 40 dogs. And that will allow her to do a lot of analysis on the immune system, as well as for us to really look at um, clinically, is it safe for the dogs? Is it, is it easy to use for the vets? And is it gonna help them? Surgery, chemo, radiation. For some pets, they're not good options or their owners can't afford them. They are super expensive or maybe the owners are out in the country and they can't get the pet into the city to have really expensive, very technical veterinary therapy. So the immunotherapies we've developed, they can just be given at a regular vet. They're not toxic to the pet. They're not toxic to the owners or the veterinary staff. So we're hoping that it'll be able to be sort of just deployed everywhere. So dogs are really man's best friend in more ways than people think. Like no one, when they get a pet, thinks that this dog can help us cure cancer. But bone cancer is one of the really devastating cancers in kids. And the cancer that the kids get is really similar to the cancer that dogs get. So we're really hoping that if we see any beneficial effects in the dogs, that eventually we can use that science to help kids.